is a true mobile running adventure. Antes de la, yo me siento un poco nervioso, claro. The first of its kind across 32 countries at all four seasons. On races, I often get pretty nervous uh, right before. In daylight, at night, at dawn or dusk, sunshine or rain. I'm thinking, hey, we're up at three in the morning, someone on the other side of the world, it's like hot as heck where they're at. Covering 14 time zones on six continents, all competing together as one. Today, the focus of the Wings for Life World Run is raising funds to find a cure for spinal cord injuries. The world is ready. I'm in Palmdale, it's outside Los Angeles. It's a desert town. There's a lot of skaters that come from this place. There's a few pros that have actually came out of here. A lot of cool people out here. There's a big crazies, but there's crazies in every town. I'm one of them. My name is Jesse Swally. I'm 52 years old, and you know that's about it. Taipei的人很有禮貌 Ataya para mí es una es un pueblo. Yo nací acá, he crecido acá, me he formado acá y he estudiado acá. Y la gente acá es, son humildes, sencillas, ahí en la agricultura, en la ganadería. Son gente generoso, amable, hospitalaria. Y todo así es acá la gente de Ataya. Yo quiero dejar uh, una huella, una marca, no sé cómo, para Ataya y para Perú. Porque con él, es mi intención y mi objetivo. Mi nombre es Remigio Oman Quispe. Eh, tengo 31 años. Toda mi vida estaba acá en Atalla. We're on the west coast in Norway. Then live in San Is, my hometown. Yeah. yeah. Do you have a top that's matched? Yes? You like it? I like it. 
I am just uh, finished high school, now it's spring, and I am starting at university, starting at psychology. So that's exciting, <laughs> and moving from home and everything. A bit scary as well. <laughs> I'm Elise, and I am 20 years old. Germany, yet a Marquino, a Hon of most with a cementor a cavabi, Corson of Sijalin, a tennisian Germany, Moka Kralin, Nagua Palin. Could you say something for me in German? Okay. He has a lemur, he come out of Ethiopia, he born in Vin. He met out Kato Piano, Menorum, Bostriano. Zung Zeta, Luch Groch, Benim Lame, one of the baby, Tregagam Chigrosh, the Sopina, Bamro, but Bagarele, Selezi. Telegagam chigger sledder resabin, and the moo chigger yaka fan nabatam with a mat for the reja yemetam, leoti mask gidereja sledder resa, let a farm seller mitchell, the carna, a political gain at the Tagar Chelly. First, I saw Lemma at a running, because we are running in the same region, and running this fast, um, you know, you're kind of, who is this guy running here? But he has no shoes and he has no equipment. And after I heard his story, I realized, wow, this is a guy with huge potential. Lema is a very soft, Nice guy, very polite. You know, he has a lot of experience in his lifetime. He doesn't trust anybody very easily, but he's still polite. Lema work right now is waiting for his asylum case to be decided. And he's not just running away for some economic reasons, because otherwise he would not have left his family. Lema is not running for pleasure and running for being having a nice run. He's running for his life to show the, the Austrian government that you are the fastest marathon runner. I'm trying to help in every aspect of his life right now. Um, so managing, you know, all the, the daily life business, becoming his trainer, coach, manager. I have three children and sometimes he, I feel he's like my fourth. But my feelings are like a friend and like somebody I have to take care of. Harald Malet, and the Asalt Anyemino, of Latinadamo, and the Betas of Dondem and the Bataman of Lumle of Chilandum, your lemon, Hulunagar cover Adrugo Misarano. Working with an athlete like him, it's for me a lifetime experience and chance. I'm very confident that if we give him a very professional environment, he's at least Olympic level athlete. I was eight years old. My brother got a skateboard for his birthday, and uh, I tried it out, and I thought it was pretty cool. When I was in high school, I skated to school as much as I could. When I left school, I took it in the Navy. They called me they're like, oh, you're a typical California kid. You got a skateboard and everything. He's always loved skateboarding. <laughs> He's a skateboarder at heart. I've always liked it and it's just fun. 
It's like almost like a roller coaster ride. You know how you get on a roller coaster? You, you ride it, they're like, that was fun. I want to do it again. Yeah, I've been skating all, this, all the time until I got, you know, I lost the use of my leg. I was stabbed in the back and it cut my spinal cord. From the hip down on my left side, it's paralyzed. When I was told I couldn't walk, that was pretty scary. You know, I thought, literally, I thought I was gonna stay in a wheelchair the rest of my life. They figured out I could, with the use of one brace and a couple of arm crutches, I could walk. I, go, I deal with pain all day long because it's like, the way I walk, it throws pain into my back and stuff. But it's like, that's just part of the deal. I could take pain pills, but I'd rather not because the pain pills have to be so powerful that I can't feel the pain, but then it's like I'm drunk. I really, I just lay around. Starting at the university, it's kind of a new chapter of my life. It's a year with psychology, and then you can go further for five more years to become a psychologist. I'm not sure if it's what I want to do, but now I will start at psychology and I will see. I will miss my parents because I'm pretty connected to them. Elisa is full of energy. She has a high ambition and she will do it uh, the whole way, I think. Uh, but she try a lot of things. You know, I love to bake cupcakes. That was maybe the first one, and then I made chocolate cake or cream cake, fondant cakes, fromage cakes, and, you know, everything. I think I baked every day for a period. <laughs> it was extreme. I just get calm, and it was like just, I don't know, therapy <laughs> to bake, I don't know. For a few years ago, it was baking. Oh. Then she go baking every day. <laughs> and she bake cupcakes and chocolate cakes, and we eat everyday cakes. My family were like, you can't bake anymore, we can't eat all these cakes. <laughs> it was pretty intense, yes. I just quit it suddenly, so I think I got sort of enough of it. Elise is very dedicated to the things she likes to do. Yes, I don't think we have motivator to do baking or to do running. Everyone asked me when I started running and I, I need really to think because I don't exactly know when. I think it started by like an hour running. I saw how long I have come. After a while, I was like, how fast can I run 10 kilometers? In November, I ran my first competition and it was a half marathon and I came second with a good time. She said there was a man uh, running before me and I decided to uh, run faster than him. <laughs> she wants to be the best in the thing she likes to do. I don't look at myself as any great runner or anything. I'm just a normal girl running <laughs> a bit much, maybe. <laughs> Yo me considero como una familia típica de Bancabelica. Tengo tres hijos. Mi hijo mayor tiene 11 años. El segundo tiene nueve años y el último tiene cuatro años. Me quedé con tajaba ni me dije, me voy a ti no me eche, me escuché. Me han dado que no te quiero, que no te voy a ir, y me han dado que no te quiero. Acción. Gracias. Se alimenta, porque no se alimenta bien, sabe, sabe qué comer. Yo para mantener a mi familia tengo que eh, trabajar acá en la chacra, sembrar, cultivar. Yo empecé a correr mmm, 
cuando estuve estudiando en nivel secundario. Empezó a correr con su bote de jefe, no tenía, ahí no había todavía zapatillas. Sí, haciendo sacrificar a mis padres, a mi mamá, le hacía vender su carnerito. Y en mi mente era conseguir una zapatilla de atletas, pero yo... En, en cinco años, en, mi forma de, en la educación secundaria, yo tenía que caminar ida y vuelta más de 15 kilómetros. Y aparte en la tarde, sobre tarde, apoyar en la chacra, caminar. Me imagino más de 20 kilómetros diarios, pero sin darme cuenta ya me estaba preparando para correr para distancias largas. Mamá 其实他的那个从小就有一些知名度我爸爸在我得到了忧郁症之后很严重然后非常的走不出去那这个忧郁症的原因我記得我印象最深刻是應該是我下定決心要跑步這件事的那一天的晚上 
，我告诉我自己，我要去做一件事情来改变自己的人生。我决定我要完成全程马拉松。他可以感受到，就是说一个人的那种宁静的那种那种愉悦感。那我在想，哦，原来跑步对他的这个身心灵可能会有很好的帮助。那个情绪跟我过去忧郁症的时候的感觉是完全不一样。我觉得那感觉就是像我很很悠闲的坐在太阳下跑步这个东西，它可以让自己的人生都不一样，不只是让身体变健康，它是让你的心态整个改变，可以给自己自信。我最近出的书其实是有关于跑步的书，是希望用我自己的经验鼓励一些女生，主要是女生，或者是一些曾经像我一样，就是生活曾经过得很颓废啊，这个完全就改变了。然后，而且她现在是属于她自己的知名度，而且是一个很健康的知名度。对我现在连那个连走在路上，我都会听到后面有人。会问我，会在那边讲说，哎，他是那个哎欧阳欧阳靖哎，然后另外问他说谁啊，然后他就就有人问，就有人会说，就那个跑步的啊。Estar acá en la talla en tres mil más de tres mil quinientos metros de altitud, pero yo me recuerdo que es mi tierra de la altura todo y me siento fuerte y lo tengo que vencer. El cansancio, el dolor, el, la sed y todo. Casa de Tanaseo, yo lucha a ficar ver quién no te le adrecha el alma. En la zona de Urchan, yo ya me recuerdo. If I am stressful or angry about something, if I go running, then that's the best therapy. You can just run and look at the great nature. 你只要去完成它，你就是一个赢家。然后甚至是说，你只要跟你自己的内心去竞争。The day I got stabbed, I had a skateboard in my car. I mean, I was 28 when I got stabbed, and my friends would literally laugh at me. They go, "I can't believe you got a skateboard in your car. What are you, a kid?" I'm like, "Hey, sorry. I like riding my skateboard." When I woke up in the hospital after the operation, they said I wouldn't be able to walk again. I know the first thing out of my mind is if I can't walk, how am I going to skate? Yeah, he wasn't skateboarding, but always telling me about it, and that's one of the things as a child I wish I could have seen him, you know, skateboarding. I thought about skating every day, and I had to wait 20 years to figure out I could still skate again. One day I got on my knees on my board and just jokingly pushed myself with my hands and started rolling forward. And I thought, hey, maybe I can skate like this. I do a lot of cool tricks. I mean, I ride on rails and go up on walls and stuff. But instead of wearing gloves, I made these things. I call them shoves. It's a half shoe and a half glove. So I, you know, that's what I push with. Just the way that he was able to turn the whole thing around and just turn it into something beautiful is, is very inspirational to me. It was like a new door had been opened up again for me. The feeling is still the same. You know, you're just rolling and nothing can stop, you know. I had a flashback of being a kid again. And I, I'm up, back on my board. It's really cool. I started running when I was like 13, and I always did that. And then, you know, after I lost the use of my leg, I couldn't run anymore. And you know, when I discovered skating again, I could still skate. It's the same feeling. The cardio, you can feel the your heart pumping. It's hard to breathe. For me, it's just something I needed to do. I 
I still ponder what it's like to uh, walk around. If I had the use of my leg, I'm like, I wish I still had the use of the back, but I'm not as bad as I used to be. You know, back in the day, I was really, really upset. I think the farthest I ever jogged when I jogged was like maybe 14 miles back when I was in the Navy. I don't know anybody that's gone 20 miles on a skateboard, you know, it's like, it's pretty cool. I was at Venice Skate Park uh, skating, and uh, two uh, girls from Red Bull were passing out flyers to join the Wings for Life race. And I asked what they was doing, and they said they're doing a race to benefit spinal cord research. And I'm like, oh, I got a spinal cord problem. Uh, maybe I can uh, join the race, too. And they said, yeah. Uh, I heard about the Wings for Life run. I had seen it in some commercial. The Wings for Life World Run is participating in over 30 countries around the globe. All around the world, thousands of runners will start a race at exactly the same time, irrespective of whether it's day or night, irrespective of the weather. You could be in New Zealand, you could be in South Africa, you could be in Great Britain. It's an aid of Wings for Life, and they're dedicated towards finding a cure for spinal cord injuries. What is exciting about the World Run is because it actually has a start line, but there's no finish line. Catcher cars on all tracks will leave the start line 30 minutes after the runners start the Wings for Life World Run. This race is coming from behind, because instead of looking ahead, they have to think of what's coming from behind. Es muy diferente de los demás porque hay una primeramente hay una meta móvil eh, que nos que nos perseguía. This is an amazing idea. It's very interesting. 比赛规则性质是这么的有趣，而且是这种全球性的。我马上就觉得说，好，这个东西我这个路跑我一定要参加，而且我一定要推广，疯狂的到处跟所有人讲。I found out Wings for Life was uh, supporting uh, spinal cord research. That's what made me just want to just get in it and go. Spinal cord injury is one of the most devastating types of injuries that can occur to a person. The spinal cord conveys all of the messages from the brain to the body. And so when the spinal cord is damaged, all of the messages are interrupted. The goal of Wings for Life is to make a clear Querschnittslähmung heilbar. Machen. And that goes only with the Förderung medizinischer Forschung. We can see a cure possible, but we're not there yet. Jetzt sind wir natürlich als Stiftung gefordert, auch die nötigen finanziellen Mittel zur Verfügung zu stellen. Das ist jetzt ein ganz wichtiger Zeitpunkt. If I had my spinal cord cured today, first thing I'd do is go get some shoes and start jogging. I would. I'd want to see what it's like to run again. I was animated and participated because it was a career benefit for those who suffered from the spinal cord. Las últimas semanas antes de la competencia, mi rutina para entrenar es luego siete y media estoy saliendo a entrenar. En dos, uh, dos horas, tres horas de entrenamiento. Lima wasn't running as long as far as he has to run at the World Run. We knew that. So the training we did was doing more endurance, longer runs. Fortalecer o saca, para sacar más fuerza, entrenar cuestas, más montaña. 
He's um, also doing weight lifting to the gym as well. Corre cerros, sube, baja, así por cuestas. He's too fast for me to accompany him for running, so I was on the bike. Tapatro masta so salam yadar kula tu tadamro bzungze bala ma kafdera jao thawa kiyo na lo kazi ansarna. Como se está yendo, me siento como que tengo más fuerza para en este deporte para correr más. When he's on competition mode, he's very focused, very straight, and you wouldn't want to get in any of his way. O sea, yo como atallino, soy un inca más, un guerrero más que puedo conquistar en el mundo. Él va a ganar. Él va a ganar acá en Perú. Nobody is going to beat him when he's going to full speed. I was very sure that he's going to win Wings for Life. I did no training or preparation before the run, but I signed up the day before. I signed up because I saw the weather was going to be nice, and I was probably going to have a long run that day anyway. Right now, all over the world, runners are assembling for a unique distance race, the first of its kind, a truly global venture across 32 countries at all four seasons. Men and women are set to run as far as they possibly can. I woke up at like one in the morning. I wanted to get there early so I didn't miss anything, so the race didn't start till three. Wings for life, so cool. I hope we raise a ton of money. So actually, in the we went into my car. We went through the tactics we wanted to run because on this day it was very windy. And if it's very windy, it takes you even more energy. I wasn't really nervous because it wasn't planned, and I just drove myself. I'm down here with one of the stars of today's program, the Catcher Car. On each Catcher Car, you can see here, they have these electronic readers so that when they pass the runners, it will record the distance covered. The runners will have about a 30-minute head start before this car gets underway. The Catcher starts on course, 15 kilometers per hour after an hour it increases to 16 kilometers per hour after another hour 17 kilometers per hour an hour later we're up to 20 kilometers per hour and by an hour later we will be up to 35 kilometers per hour your job today as a distance runner stay in front of this car for as long as possible one minute to start and counting Let's hope that uh, these runners, an awful lot of them, can achieve or even beat the target times that they've set themselves. We were like, uh, what pace are we going to have? Because I hadn't actually warmed up anything. I was actually freezing, so I was like, can we start now? I first confide in God, in me, in the family. I'm going to have a good performance. A lot of them didn't know what I was about to do because I was walking around with my board in my hands. 然後大家就是精神非常好,當然也有可能是因為台灣場的比賽時間是下午傍晚,那個時候大家精神都好。Over 30 seconds to go. Yeah, the group and once you see the catcher car, go for it at full speed because nobody is going to catch you. The world is ready. Come with me. to make 
their mark to get ahead because each and every one of these locations you see on your screens from around the globe will have a catcher car chasing them down. When I participate in race, I always said, no, it's not serious, but I always get a bit focused. I ran with one of my running friends. We hold the pace by 15 kilometers an hour, and there was many people behind us, so we were kind of dragging those. So we were like, are we going to do all the work here? We expect the elite athletes to go hard. We expect the ambassadors to enjoy. We expect the amateur runners to have a fantastic time and raise a lot of money. Every athlete is wearing a chip, and when they cross the start line, their chip activates the clock for them. The first few kilometers were pretty easy. There was a little bit of uphill, but it wasn't that bad. I mean, I was jazzed on the like a sled for the first seven miles or so. I mean, because I was literally in the first place. In this type of competitions, there are athletes who are ahead. Se van rápido, pero yo trataba de controlar a la gente. Yo le decía que así vas a aguantar más de hace 100 kilómetros, pero... Otros cercamente no me hacían caso, se iban de largo y con todo y aguantaban 8 kilómetros de allá. Y yo estaba bien planificado que tenía que ir de menos a más. All over the world, those catcher cars are hoovering up the runners. Sadly, we'll say goodbye to a lot of our celebrities. We start to get down to the nitty gritty of the competition now. It's not about the fastest, it's about the furthest. Lima was one of those very unknown people like an underdog, the only black guy running in Austria. We have a very famous long distance running. His name is Christian Schiester. It's a big disappointment for the Austrian crowd. Christian Schiester is out of the competition. Everybody was expecting him to be one of the favorites. So still over 32,000 runners left in the race. Once in a while, I'd look over my shoulder to see how many runners were behind me. And then I'd look behind me to see how many runners are gaining on me, because that way I could judge if I'm slowing down or not. Oh, look at the rain in Cape Town. Uh, we're getting uh, closer and closer to the half marathon distance, just over 21 kilometers. Maybe after 20 kilometers or something, it was really spread, and many was already catch by the car. I think the longest I had run before was 31 kilometers, but that was then I ran a lot slower, so I wasn't really sure what I was capable of. These two are absolutely flying. It's the first lady in Norway. The only thing that messes me up on skating is going up the hills. I mean, I literally go so slow that people can walk past me sometimes. But then the payoff is when I go downhill, hey, get a rest. I've never commentated on an event that is unique like this, that has athletes running all over the world, and where we bring brought images from over the world. It is quite stunning. Everybody's running at the same time, and I thought that was amazing. I thought that was just so cool. And I'm thinking, maybe these people are out here because they know somebody with a spinal cord disorder. When my, me and my running buddy was like, when we got tired, we just said to each other, yeah, 
we run for the one they can't. There was a couple of times I got tears in my eyes because that many people care. I was, I was tripping on it. But I remember when I was going, some girl came running past me. She goes, oh no, the chase car is right there. And I looked back and I seen it, oh man. And I started booking it and I started going faster and faster. And I'm thinking, why wasn't I going this fast earlier? I could have been farther up the road. But to find the guy stopped me, he goes, all right, Jesse, you're done. Good job, man. cool. I was relieved. I'm like, OK, it's over now. So I know I did quite a few distance, quite a far distance. So it really means a lot to me to just, I feel like I'm running again and being a normal human being. We've lost uh, something over 80% of runners now. It's only a matter of time before the lead women start to look over their shoulders and see that catcher car. Uh, this is the leading woman in uh, Verona. And she gets caught. This is Elisa Molvik, uh, current leader in Stavanger. 42.2 kilometers. She's run 26.2 miles. And I have to say, we're talking about the men looking comfortable and in control. Stavanger is by far from a flat course. And uh, she seems to be quite comfortable and running well here. Trying to spot that uh, catcher car in the distance. And uh, it's nowhere to be seen. I was always looking behind my shoulder to see if the catching car was coming because I wanted it to come because I was tired, of course, but uh, it was really hurting in the, in the feet. This lady is the current leader in Stefanger and she's looking good. She's possibly up against uh, Nathalie Vasseur in uh, Hellebon in France for the women's uh, global title here. 43.9 kilometers for the leading lady. She has passed the marathon. We could yet be looking at today's winner. I'm pretty hard in my head, so I'm like, yeah. Yeah, if she, you should focus now and just run. This is the last uh, American woman in uh, the competition. That is total submission. <laughs> she looks delighted. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in uh, Austria, it looks to be that the leading woman has been caught there as well. Children said, Grandmother Elise is leading. She, she's winning. I, I was shocked. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I didn't see the car until it was almost, it had almost catched me. So I started to sprint because I wanted to get some extra meters. It was great to see my daughter in the television. <laughs> Yeah. We know she likes to run. Got to win all of uh, the world. The world. <laughs> I have never. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of shocked when they sort of say you're the global winner, and all the people around uh, it seemed like they were pretty shocked as well. Yeah, I think it's amazing. After I passed uh, the marathon, I was like. When is the car coming? When is the car coming? And it was never coming. So I was like, oh. Yes. So it was a little bit hard to not have a finish line, but it was pretty cool as well. 54.7 kilometers, 34 oh. miles. The global female winner of the Wings for Life World Run, Elise Molvik in Stavanger, Norway. 
This is another one of the big surprises, the Ethiopian, Tim. Limar Verk Kitimar, who has waited very patiently as the ultramarathon runners pick off the marathon runners. Martelletti in Silverstone, the Land Rover Discovery looming down. He doesn't want to go. Come on, keep pushing. It's futile. Don't do it. <laughs> this is j Mark being caught. One more boost, one more kick, one more dig deep for Calcaterra. Island out. Marcus Mockenhaus swallowed up. Martelletti in fifth place overall. That's his day done. Out goes Calcaterra. There are three left in the race. We're getting information that the Peruvian is already past 73 kilometers. Si no, el objetivo era a nivel mundial ganar la carrera. Y como me comentaban de la camioneta, cómo estaba desarrollándose en, en el resto del mundo. It's a cat and mouse situation in Austria. Neymar had to find who of those fast guys in the group is going to be the one to stay with. We didn't know them very well, but we know that the Ukrainian guy. Gleva with uh, the athlete right behind him there, Kitima, slipstreaming in effect. It's called drafting. The guy in front, he is responsible of keeping a certain speed, and he's taking also the wind. You know exactly how much energy you can save staying behind. Well, if I was Gleva, I'd be getting a little bit annoyed by now. Kitima is uh, sticking exactly behind him. He couldn't be more perfectly in his slipstream. It doesn't look very nice, but that was the tactics. It's no problem. It's legally doing that, and it's clever. He's a professional athlete, and he has to win, and he's going for a win. Gleva's trying to pick up the pace a little, Tim, and try and see what Kitima has really got. Los únicos oponentes eran con el resto del mundo. Lo que llamamos en el deporte básico de correr, en el fundismo. Claro, ya era imposible que aquí en Perú alguien que me pueda alcanzar. Ya no había nadie atrás. En el kilómetro 50, 60 es lo que he sentido sed, cansancio, hambre. Lo que más me empujaba era recordando a mi familia. Start to look further down the highway, a little further ahead, then we start to see our two runners. Can you spot them yet? There they are. I think now it could be the case that Ketimar is waiting for his moment. You know, the energy reserves and the mental reserves of strength that these men are displaying is absolutely staggering. Giuseppe is also keeping the Kasha car at bay, which you can just see. But look, here it comes. And there goes Ketamar kicking away again. Oh, oh this is fabulous. Oh, come on, <laughs> Gleba. That is not on, I'm afraid. Neymar was not expecting any of that, and for a short second he was very confused. But then he figured, no, I'm going to run. Well, Ketamar is now angry. And away goes Katamar with that classic Ethiopian kick. And how long can he keep the Kachikara at bay? Yes, yes, this is exactly the tactics we were talking. I love him, yeah, I love him. <laughs> Gleaver has gone, he's hit the wall. It's all over for Evgeny Gleaver, which leaves Ketamar out there. The Peruvian runner is still yet to be caught by the Kachikar. There are now two runners left in the Wings for Life World Run Global Challenge. It is Ketamar in Austria, it is Giuseppe in Peru. It is official. Lemmerwork Ketama is the global male winner. To be honest, I had to cry. <laughs> really, I had tears in my eyes. Kispe of Peru is officially in second position. Yo lideraría el campeón de Win for Life a nivel mundial. Eh, primeramente han tenido una competencia bien reñida. 
He visto los últimos metros, cómo luchaban. Donde que corrió él, en Austria mismo, mi, perso mi persona iría allá a competir con él. This was very important for his future career. So for him it was a huge milestone in his future life. It is going to change his whole life. I'm very sure of that. So I will still continue I think it's amazing. It's not just a race that it's important to win, but it actually goes to a good cause. For me, to be part of the Win for Life, Fue importante y siempre mi vida va a ser correr. He doesn't let the disability control his life at all. I think he's going to compete as much as he can. For so many years, I've seen all these marathons, and I want to be part of that, but I can't because I can't run. Taking part in the Wings for Life run meant that I still have a chance to be part of the group. I'll be competing next year for sure.